It all began with a kettle. James Watt's aunt was angry. Rather than reading a good book, the 15-year-old sat around the house all day just watching the kettle boil. He'd lift the lid, look inside, see the steam rising, see the steam condensing on the inside of the lid. Now, what the aunt took as um, idleness was really the keen attention of a junior scientist, a man who would, one day, invent the world's first really efficient steam engine. James Watt grew up to be a maker of scientific instruments at Glasgow University. One day, he was asked to repair a model of an early steam engine, the Newcomen engine. The model had literally run out of steam. The Newcomen engine had been in use since the beginning of the 18th century. It was mainly used for pumping water out of mines, but didn't work terribly well. The engine operated on the principle of a vacuum, created by condensing steam in a single cylinder. However, it consumed a huge amount of coal to produce not a lot of power. Now, the problem with this engine is that steam had to be injected and condensed in the same cylinder. This means that for every stroke of the piston, the cylinder had to be heated and cooled, heated and cooled, heated and cooled. This made the machine um, very, very inefficient indeed. Watt fixed the model, but wrestled with the problem of its inefficiency for over a year. Then he went for a walk on a Glasgow golf course. In 1765, as he walked across Glasgow Green, inspiration struck. As he was to write, I'd walked no further than the golf house before I had the whole thing arranged in my mind. Good shot, sir. This is Crofton Pumping Station. It provides water for the Kennet and Avon Canal. Inside the station is the oldest steam engine in the world still doing its original job. And it was built by Watt. In the Newcomer engine, steam was injected and condensed in the same cylinder, making it really not very efficient. This is where Watt had a simple, ingenious idea, a real leap forward in his engine the cooling process was separated from the cylinder. And here we have his condenser down here. A wonderful thing, which means that the cylinder upstairs will remain hot all the time. Steam from the boiler enters the cylinder at the top, pushing down the piston inside. At the end of the stroke, the pressure in the cylinder is equalised, and the natural weight of the pump rod pulls the piston up towards its starting position. As it rises, a valve releases the steam into the bottom of the cylinder. On each downward stroke, this steam is drawn into the separate condenser, where it is condensed. This process creates a vacuum which pulls down the piston as the steam above pushes it down. This amazingly efficient use of steam means that the Watt engine consumes less than a third of the amount of coal used by the Newcomen engine. It's also twice as powerful. The awesome power of this engine raised the tonne of water with every stroke. That's nearly four million gallons a day. But Watt's engine was to become more than just an efficient super pump, it was to drive the transformation of every workplace in the country. But there was a problem. Watt was a, a pessimist, a hypochondriac, prone to fits of despair, inactivity and depression. His low point came in 1773, when he concluded that there was nothing more foolish than inventing. And for once, his depression was justified because after eight years of toil on his steam engine, his partner went bankrupt. What he needed, of course, was a new partner, one with drive, resourcefulness, and a head for business. Enter Matthew Bolton. Bolton was a dynamic Birmingham manufacturer who, when he met Watt, saw the designs of the steam engine and immediately realized its potential as a business venture. Bolton, with his ready cash, his craftsman, and his confidence, took on this great and new idea, and he ran with it. Watt left Scotland and joined Bolton in Birmingham in 1774. 
In partnership, these two men were going to be, as you'll see, giants of the Industrial Revolution. Within five years, after improving their prototypes, they had captured the market in steam engines for pumping water out of tin, copper and lead mines. But Bolton had bigger ambitions. Bolton realised that one small but highly significant alteration to a steam engine would make it much, much more useful. He urged Watt to devise a way of converting the up and down or reciprocating action of the engine into rotary action. So it worked rather like a super efficient, powerful and very reliable water wheel. With an arm attached to a crankshaft, driving a system of belts, the steam engine could power not just one machine at a time, but a whole series of them. Steam power was about to change work and the workplace, not just for the miner, but for the manufacturer, the iron foundry worker, the textile worker, the distiller, and even the potter. 